Okay, so th this video isn't only on the midterm because I'll just mention a couple of last things about the midterm. It's really more of a preview for paper number four. And I'm doing that partly because as I probably already mentioned, well, oh, first of all, let me mention that Rosie is also here. <laughs> when I make these videos, I always close the door to my office so that I'm not bothering my wife, Allison, as she's finishing up with work. And so sometimes Rosie gets stuck in here with me if she's in her bed. And so she's not happy about that right now. As you can see, I think she wants to go outside, but she's also cold today. So she wants to sit on my lap, although she doesn't like starring in these videos, I guess. Um, we'll see if she comes back here in a second. So this is a, also a bit of a preview for paper four uh, that we're starting on next as we get into the uh, second half or, uh, of the semester in the next couple of weeks. So a couple of last minute things on the midterm, and then I'll just mention some, some, uh, some things to think about uh, as we start looking forward to that next paper, uh, which you can already see on Blackboard. I haven't done the official update or announcement on it yet, but it's, it's, it's there if you wanna take a look at the directions and it does involve Jamila Woods. Uh, but before I mention any of that and how the, the fourth paper connects in with, uh, with uh, uh, the second part of the midterm, let me also just mention a couple of things uh, just as reminders as you get ready to pass in the midterm. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you know, please let me know. Uh, it, it's, you know, also for the first half of it, you know, make sure you are formatting it in that, that letter, formal letter format. There's a sample letter in, in Blackboard you can take a look at. Um, it's the only assignment that we're going to do like this, but that's just sta a standard sort of, uh, again, format for this. And I want to make sure you're aware of that so that, you know, in the future when you have to write, um, <clears throat> excuse me, any kind of formal letters, you just have a sense of that. It's, it's, just, it's an assignment I always do in this class just as a, as a kind of a practice because it's a very practical uh, thing to know how to do, uh, particularly as you, as you get into your profession and as you get into other classes or, you know, if you start writing uh, applications for um, uh, scholarships or other kinds of uh, uh, financial support as you, as you get further into your career, um, it's good to have those kinds of skills. And it's just a sort of a, a simple assignment to, to encourage you to do that. The other thing about that first part of the, of the midterm, as you probably noticed as you've been working on it, is that it is designed to have you reflect on the first three papers that we did in the first half of the semester. To go back, think about the readings that we did, think about uh, you know the, the work you've already done and also what you can improve on. I've also set it up in such a way, as you probably noticed that, it's asking you to kind of look back at what your, you know, stronger papers have been, which, which of them may have been your weaker papers, because at the end of the semester, as I've mentioned to a lot of you in, in, my, in my comments in your papers, um, we are going to have a revision assignment, and the revision assignment um, will ask you to go back again to those first three papers of the class and to pick one of them to do a revision on or an expansion on. And, and don't worry about that yet, because that's that's going to be at the very end of the semester. But, but this midterm is sort of tied into what what we'll do for the very end of the semester after we've finished up with papers four and five here in the second half of the term. But the second part of the midterm, the shorter part, that's only two paragraphs long, the response to Jamila Woods is, as I said, a preview to paper number four. And this is true for a couple of reasons uh, that I wanna mention. And again, this is also a way to sort of get us into the reading we're gonna be doing next. The second part of 101, I always treat uh, as a kind of bridge into English 102. Now, not all of you are gonna take English 102. You don't all necessarily have to take it. It all depends on what program you're in. So for certain certificate programs, you don't need English 102. Uh, but there's a lot of you that will have to take English 102, particularly if you're uh, if you're transferring after you finish uh, your associate's degree here at Harper. There's other programs where, it, where it's required. So. So some of what I do in the second half of 101 is also designed to help you get ready for that, which means, for example, we're going to be using the library database, uh, the online library database to find a source for paper number four. Uh, and we're using more poetry from Jamila Woods because a lot of the English 102 classes that you might take if you take it in the spring semester, do focus more on literature. So they'll have more poetry or short stories. Some of them even have plays, not all of them. Again, it varies. It depends who you take for that class in the spring semester if you are taking it. Um, so I want, to, I want you to have a little preparation for that. So you'll see that in, even in the readings that we're gonna do in the second half of the semester from Jamila Woods, again, more poems from her. We'll do a little more with Sandra Cisneros who you had to read for, for the midterm. Uh, John Porcelino, the graphic novelist who I've mentioned before, we're gonna read a couple of his short stories that are up on Blackboard. And we're gonna do those next actually, as we sort of uh, start getting prepared uh, to think about paper number four. So I mentioned all this because the what you're writing about 
concerning Jamila Woods in the second half of the, uh, the midterm is a little bit of a preview of, of what you'll be writing in paper number four. But what we're going to do is we're going to expand on the sources that we're using. We use sources for every one of the papers that we did thus far, but we're going to now start using the library resources, which you're going to need to be aware of how to use not only for, for English 102, but also for your other classes. So this is the part of the semester where I also talk about the issue of plagiarism in more detail. And on a simple level, plagiarism is something you should never do. So, so if your instinct is, if you're struggling with a paper or a class, if your instinct is to look up material and then splice it, copy it into your own work and pass it off as your own, you're not going to pass. You're not going to. You're not going to do well in the paper. You're. You're not going to do well in the class. There's serious consequences that go along with, with um, taking sor taking sources and not citing them correctly. It's a different story if you're not citing things correctly just by not having exactly perfect MLA documentation. If you you know your if your citations are a little bit wrong, but you're still citing the material and you're still acknowledging where it comes from, that's fine. Uh, but one of the things we're going to talk about more here in the second half of the semester. Now that we've talked about using MLA source citations, you know, we've done that on all three of the papers. We use Mike Rose for paper number one, and you had to quote a little bit from him. You had to quote from Susan Sontag in paper number two. And then in paper number three, you had those choice amongst the three different writers as to, as to which one you would take quotations from. But as we get into the second half, and you've helped, you'll have to find some sources on Jamila Woods for paper number four. And again, we'll talk about that in a separate video as far as what paper four requires. Again, I want to just keep encouraging you to keep using the MLA formatting to make sure you're citing things correctly. If you reach a point at any time in any of the work we do in the second half of the semester where you feel stuck or you feel like you're not sure of what sources to use, your first instinct should be to ask me for help, right? Whether that means having a Zoom meeting with me or sending me a draft or just sending me an email saying, Dr. Kremens, I'm really struggling. I need help with this. And I would encourage you to do that. You shouldn't just jump online to Wikipedia or to whatever other site and then try to find material and then splice it into your paper because it's not going to read very well, number one, because most of the time in my experience, and again, as you, I've had a lot of experience in this, in this area since I've been teaching for so long, every time I have a student that starts splicing in things from other sources, and I've had students even take entire papers from websites and pass them in and then fail the assignment and et cetera. We won't get into that. I won't, I like to stay positive. Um, they never; those papers never come out very good. Uh, and the reason for that is you're not sharing your own ideas. It's not your writing, so so you don't have any connection to it. And oftentimes it's choppy. If you're not even evaluating what the sources are, that's that's a huge problem. And I'm telling you all this because uh, I, I, I vi very vividly remember last year having somebody plagiarize on the second part of the midterm and the very part you're working on now or finishing up on Jamila Woods, instead of just giving me their interpretation of the poem or asking for help if they didn't understand the poem and asking for suggestions, they went online and they found a website that analyzed uh, very briefly, there's not a lot out there on Jamila Woods, but that analyzed Jamila Woods' poem and they just spliced it into their assignment. So the first paragraph as I was reading it, it clearly didn't look like the student's writing. And so I said to myself, well, I'm, you know, I normally, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll send those kind of papers through the, the, the um, source checker that we have in Blackboard, you know, it processes it. But in this case, I didn't even need to do that because I typed in one sentence or cut and pasted into my browser. And sure enough, the whole, the whole page came up and he failed the assignment or uh, a student, student failed the assignment. And I won't get into any of, the, any of the other details, but it was unfortunate because, again, I want to read your writing. I don't want to read something cobbled together from another site or whatever, wherever it's found, because all those sites are not very good. And let me tell you one other story. I actually know someone in Chicago, here in Chicago, who actually writes for those websites that people use to plagiarize from, you know, those things like academian.com and, and sparknotes.com and, and all these other places. I actually know a freelance writer who writes for those websites. And, you know, he's, I guess he's proud of the writing he does for them or gets paid well for it. I don't know. But I, the first time he told me, I, and I, I thought to myself, I, it, it, those are basically plagiarism sites, you know, where they have these summaries of the books and these really bad analyses of, of poems and stories and these other things. Um, so I guess basically what I'm saying in this video, particularly as we, as you're writing about Jamila Woods for this midterm and as we're getting ready for paper four is if you're struggling in interpreting something, if you if you're worried, as I said in the last video about interpreting a poem, uh, please ask me for help. 
don't go online to these websites and try to copy stuff from them because your writing is not going to look very good. You're not going to learn anything from it. And uh, it's not good preparation at all for, uh, for English 102 either. And I say that now because, again, in the second half of the semester, we'll talk way more about you know, finding these sources in the database, the library database, which you can do, do from home. It's all electronic now. Uh, you don't you do not have to go physically to the library, which is amazing. When I was your when I was your age, thirty years ago, and I was doing a class like this, I had to walk to the library. We didn't have databases like this. We had email. We did have email in the early '90s, but we we didn't have databases. And I went to college in New Hampshire, Dartmouth, so you know it was pretty cold. I have to say, in 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 uh, certain times of the year when I'd have to trudge over to the library, um, which I didn't even have, for some reason, I only wore Chuck Taylors, if you know what those are, Converse Chuck Taylors, you know, I'm a punk rock kid. And so I refused to wear boots in the winter in the middle of New Hampshire, which was not a good idea because it was cold. Uh, and there was a lot of snow. Uh, even the snow we get out here in Chicago is nothing like New Hampshire and Vermont in the winter. Anyway, I'm going on a lot of digressions today. But anyway, I, I say all this just to tell you to please ask for help. If you're struggling, I will help you as best I can to, to do, you know, to do well in your assignments, to understand them. So don't start looking online for like interpretations of Jamila Woods' poems or interpretations of John Porcelino's stories. Um, in fact, I'm going to give you one more story before I wrap up this video and uh, just give you some last reminders of the midterm. Uh, several, several years ago, this may, oh, wow, it might almost be a decade ago now or getting close to it. Uh, I was teaching John, one of John Porcelino's stories. Actually, it was a semester, I think, where he came to campus because his mother still lives near uh, Harper. And uh, I try to get him onto campus every once in a while to talk about his writing and his, and his art since he's from Hoffman Estates, as you'll see when you read some of his work for uh, paper number four. But at any rate, I had a student um, and I was reading their paper. And it looked a little strange, you know, this was already how many papers are into the semester and, and I said, I don't know, this, this doesn't look right. And so I, again, I plugged in a couple of lines into like, you know, the source checker, I sent it through Blackboard through the, the checker that we have. And I almost didn't need to do that because what the student has had done is that they had plagiarized one of my good friends who had written an article for the Chicago Reader, the newspaper about John Porcelino. Uh, and there was something about the phrasing. They described the, the noodle limbed drawings in his book. And he does draw these sort of odd, you know, kind of uh, rubbery noodle looking characters. And I said, that sounds like something I've read before. And sure enough, as soon as I looked up those few sentences, it was my friend Jake's review, book review in the Chicago Reader of John Porcelino's book, Perfect Example, which as I said, we're not reading the whole book. I just took some excerpts. I do this whole book in, in English 102, but I, I use some excerpts from it in 101. And um, uh, sure enough, you know, looked it up and, and the student had plagiarized from, um, from, a, from a good friend of mine, someone I've known for, at this point, I've known for almost 20 years. At that time, I'd known for, you know, a good 15 years or so. And I knew his writing pretty well. So as soon as I found that he'd, he'd been the one who'd written the article that this student had plagiarized from, I said, well, of course. Now, the footnote to that story is uh, a student did well, failed the paper, you know, it, again, I won't get into all that because like I said, it's, it's, it's not good. You're better off writing a paper for me that's yours, but is not as strong as it could be because you can revise it later on rather than cheating and copying from other sources. But you're, a couple of years later, I did tell Jake, I said, oh, by the way, Jake, one of my students plagiarized from your <laughs> review of John Porcelino and the reader. And he sort of laughed about it. He said, well, was the paper any good? I said, no. And he said, are you trying to insult me that my article wasn't good or something like that? Uh, we were joking. And, and, I, and I said, Jake, your writing is wonderful, but people need to cite you. I said, that's because your writing is so good. They need to cite where it comes from. And we kind of laughed about it. And uh, anyway, why do I mention all this stuff to you? Because, because it's not worth it. Don't play dry stuff. I want your interpretations of these things. And again, if you're struggling with an interpretation, if you, you don't like, you think you don't like poetry or you're, you're not sure what to write, just ask. I, I, you know, I can help you develop ideas and I'd rather you do that. I'd rather we have a conversation about your work rather than you going online and, and, and get splicing stuff or trying to find papers or, or, or goodness sake, buying papers. I've had students try to do that too or do that where they buy a paper and I've tracked it down. And I one time even had a student many, many years ago now who uh, I, I discovered had bought a paper that looked like they spent almost $100 on it. At least that's what the website where they bought it from said. And I was like, wow, this was a terrible paper. You're out $100 and you've, and you've failed on top of it. None of this was worth it. Um, so anyway, 
I thought I would mention that because we're getting into the part of the semester we, where we will be using, you know, sources from the library database. I'll be showing you how to use those databases. So don't worry about that if you haven't used them before. I'll, I have a whole video that we'll be doing on, on that. And as I said, I love writing. I love to do editing on work and I love reading other people's writing. And I don't, I don't have any sense or I don't feel, I'm not judging you. If, if your writing is flawed or imperfect, those terms don't even mean anything to me because we're all learning. I'm 48 years old. Well, 47 and not quite 48. I'll be 48 next month at the end of the, at the end of the month near near Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm almost 48, um, and I'm still learning how to write. I've, I've published two books and I'm still learning. So nobody's a perfect writer, you know. Nobody from the most professional, award-winning writer to someone like me that's just published a couple of books that very few people probably have read uh, to you who's a student in, in, in my class. So we're all in this together. Please ask me for help. Don't try to copy other stuff. And anyway, I mentioned all that because as I said, we're gonna be getting into more uh, of the use of databases and sources uh, in the second half of the semester. And I look forward to seeing how you're gonna do with that. And again, I thank you for the work that you've all done in this first half of the semester. Um, so just to wrap up, like I said, if you have any other questions on the midterm, please let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll have another video coming up in a couple of days about the readings for paper number four, which I'm excited about. There's some of my favorite readings that I do in 101, Jamila Woods and John Porcelino, two Chicago writers who are amazing. And we'll also be getting back into to, uh, Sandra Cisneros a, a, in this part of the semester uh, in November. So wonderful writing that I hope you enjoy, okay? so. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Rosie's back in her bed over near my guitar. So, so she also wishes you well uh, as you finish up your midterm and as you probably finish up some other midterms th uh, this week. Uh, and again, please let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video to talk about uh, more Jamila Woods, John Porcelino and paper number four. See you then.